Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Final Rosa Podcast. I'm your host today, Javon, and yes, as you can see on screen, we have one of the biggest voices in Chelsea, one of the faces of Chelsea, especially from my side of the world, um, Matisse Armani. How are you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm very good. Um, pleasure to be on. Pleasure to be on. We was having some issues technically, both of us, like trying to get this lined up, but we managed <laughs> to get there in the end. So, yeah, man, it's good to be good to be on. Finally, finally, right? It is. Welcome to my house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, nice, it happens. Bro. It looks nice around there. I'll be real. Riverside. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's all calm. It's all calm. It's all calm. All right. So today, today, guys, we'll be having a one-on-one with Matisse Amani, and then we'll go. Obviously, he's a Chelsea fan. Chelsea, the Chelsea fan. So we're gonna go through the squad list at a later date. So Matisse Armani, give give us give us some background. My first question is just to get get kick, just get us started. What influenced you to start supporting Chelsea? Where did that where did that birth begin? Mm. Well, I went to my first game in two thousand and seven. Uh, I think it was a one one draw at home to Aston Villa. Um, and at the time, at the time, I obviously played Sunday League as well. So I was I was playing football, um, but I wasn't necessarily really watching it. It was more something I actually enjoyed playing and like, you know, trying to, you know, develop my skills and my attributes and whatnot. But I, I didn't think I was going to make it. And I definitely, I definitely didn't watch it like religiously. So I was kind of, a, I was late into watching football. I think, you know, most people probably, maybe they watched it from eight, seven you know, years old or maybe even, you know, lower than that. For me, it was like, what, 11 or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just went to that game. I'd been to some championship games as well, but it was a liquidator for me, man. Mm-hmm. Like, we because I wanted to get there early because I was like, yo, it's my first Premier League game. I've never been to a Premier League game, so I want to I wanna take it all in. Mm-hmm. Uh, that At that point, I was a massive fan of Lampard already because I'd played him. I'd used him a lot on on like FIFA and whatnot. You already know. You yeah, already know. Same. That's where true love starts. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was banging in. He was banging in long ranges for me all the time. Um, and then uh, yeah, I went to that game and then bro, that liquidator man, that beat just bro. And then all these blue flags flying. You know what I mean? All these Chelsea flags flying as well. Obviously, every every boy, most boys, blue is their favorite color, right? So mm-hmm. that was an easy sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yeah, man, just watching the game and the atmosphere was really good. And I just, I just was like, yo, this is my team. I was like, this is my team, bro. It's like everything's blue. The mm-hmm. the, the, the intro was bopping. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was, the, the 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 intro to the album was was on point. <laughs> and we're here now. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Now we're here. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. So. Yeah, at that point, I didn't really realize how I knew they were. I knew they were a, a, a very good team. Do you know what I mean, mm-hmm. I, I knew I was going to watch a very good team, but I didn't realize just how good they were before mm-hmm. I before I'd watched them in person. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd heard things, and do you know what I mean, but I never, I never knew they were that that good. So yes, right. I got lucky in that way because that could have been, I don't know, that could have been any other blue team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just to expound upon, just to expound upon a couple of things here. Firstly, as someone who's never been to England, who's planning a trip soon, by the way, mm. what's it like growing up in in that in that footballing culture? Because mm. no, no, we're older. No, we have sense, and I guess we all look back and say, you know what? If I could have given it an extra ten percent here or there, I would do my best to make it as a footballer. What's it like mm. growing up in England, surrounded by the game we love and mm. do eat, breathe, and sleep football? It's um. It's 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 mad, bro. Like everybody is nonstop talking about it. You know what I mean? But like, it doesn't matter where you go, everybody can relate to that. Any any guy that you speak to, they nine times out of ten, they they support a football team and they're ready to to do battle and talk about it. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter where that is in in around here. So it's it's nice in a way because it's an easy it's an easy like icebreaker. If you're mm-hmm. if you're meeting people, mm-hmm. you're on a night out. Um, you've gone somewhere with mates and you've bumped into another group. You bring that up, and mm-hmm. you've got your topic for the day. You got your mm-hmm. topic for the for the for the day. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it is it is a lot. Like people are on it over here. Like it's 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 religious to them. Mm-hmm. Um, there's people that go to like every single game. They've gone to every single game for the last twenty twenty thirty years. Mm-hmm. They've got their spots. People have got mm-hmm. their rituals. Um, mm-hmm. people have got their to do lists in the morning. <laughs> what they would do before the game. So. It's, I would say it's, it's for, for a lot of people, it's a religion. 
Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it a religion for me because I try not to make it my whole life, but mm-hmm. it does take over a good 85% of my life because not only is it now my job, but it's also what what peaks and dips my emotions the most. Mm-hmm. Like nothing, nothing, because I'm usually quite a calm person. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? If I've, if I've got a problem, I'll just solve it. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? I'm not going to be going up and down about it. But with Chelsea, they're the one, they're the one thing that will send me into panic stations. <laughs> yep. Panic stations send me into overdrive or send me into delirium. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, and that's, that's uncontrollable. So they're the only thing that really peaks and dips my emotions to like ridiculous levels. So, and I, I say that's the same for a lot of people. So yeah, it's just when you go to the games, and this is, I guess, is for any club. Mm-hmm. It's just when, when you get there and you just see everybody. It's like an army you're part of, really. Mm-hmm. You don't know these people. You know what I mean? You don't know these people. And you wouldn't see them any other time but right now. But when you're, when you're all marching towards that ground mm-hmm. and there's a job to be done, it's an army. Do you know what I mean? You're moving as a, as a unit. And you need, to, you need to go in there and get the job done. So, mm-hmm. yeah, man, it's, it's, it's quality, I have to say. It's quality. Good, good, good. Um, you touched on a point there. Uh, I was just about to ask to just kind of explain what it's like to immerse yourself and give yourself to something so wholeheartedly when you walk into that stadium. Because I've been to Chelsea games here, but man, it's preseason. Uh, there's no competitive nature to it. There's no, there's no. Okay, this is a league game, or no, this is Spurs. They get better everywhere they go. This is no Arsenal or fierce London rivals. It's nothing like that. What's it like being into the stadium? And not even just the stadium. What's it like being around London when there's a London derby coming up, whether it's competitive or not? I went to um, I went to Tottenham away, which was Lampard for Chelsea versus Tottenham Mourinho, mm. and we did win that game because mm-hmm. I, I remember we were game. we were brilliant in London derbies that year with, mm-hmm. with Lampard. Um, that was his first his first season with the with the with the youngsters with the Cobham kids, mm. but bro. That was my that was my only time I've gone to Tottenham away. I've been to some I've been to some great games. I I ax at home the four four, you know I've been to Arsenal uh, see see us against Arsenal. But that Tottenham away game mm-hmm. because we went to their ground, mm-hmm. and and if you know anything about Tottenham, it's a very difficult ground to get in and out of because they've got this long Seven Sisters road that just goes on forever, and you're basically walking through the entire the entire of Tottenham. You're mm-hmm. walking through their home. And to get just just to get from the station mm-hmm. to get to the stadium, mm-hmm. like it's a long walk. And when you make that walk from that station, as soon as you come out, it's police everywhere because they know that if these Chelsea and Tottenham fans get too close, get it's it. going to be a madness. madness. Like mm-hmm. I can't explain the hatred. I've always had like a, a problem with Chelsea at home singing about Tottenham in terms of like the intro, the, the mm-hmm. anthem, the the liquidator, like. We would wow. we would sing we hate Tottenham when the team are walking out. I would prefer mm-hmm. that we say Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? You yeah. know what I mean? Come on, Chelsea. You don't but, even want to hear the name. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you know what I mean? Because like they shouldn't be taking up our focus in their home game against Bournemouth. But mm-hmm. that just tells you how much these two hate each other. Like the hatred is, and mm-hmm. I don't know. Like sometimes I forget how much we hate each other because when I'm watching it on TV, I'm doing a watch along. Of course, I hate them. Mm-hmm. But when I go. And for some reason, that group of people wearing them Tottenham shirts or them group of people wearing them Liverpool shirts, I went to the cup final as well when we lost on penalties. It just becomes so aggressive. And the, 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 the animosity between the two sets of fans is just immediately there. Mm-hmm. They'll start cussing us, we'll start cussing them. So when you come out of that station, it's just police everywhere. And the police are just escorting all of us straight to the stadium. There's no you know, side trips to the pub or straight to the stadium, straight to your seats because get in and get out. On the other side of those police mm-hmm. is just Tottenham fans and they're and they're at home. So obviously their capacity is crazy. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. You just see a sea of white. And it, it you know, it used to be even more like smoke grenades and like it used to be a mm-hmm. like you uh, Millwall West Ham is a great example, mm-hmm. massive ri- rivalry in London. Mm-hmm. There's there's been clashes where people are punching each other up, but there's smoke grenades. Like it looks like it's a war. It mm-hmm. looks like a war that you're Turkey sitting. Yeah, yeah. Look, it looks mad. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, you just got, you got to walk all the way to that stadium, and then when you're there, the atmosphere that and away at times Stamford Bridge as a as a as a collective is quiet. 
Mm-hmm. There's pockets in the stadium that will make noise, but there's big sections that won't. West stand, whatever family stand is always going to take a hit. Mm-hmm. But away, away, the one thing I've clocked is that away group, that core, they, they are the core mm-hmm. because they will travel to Middlesbrough. They will travel to Bournemouth. They will travel to, 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 to Tottenham. They will go to, they will go to Serviette. They will go anywhere. Mm-hmm. And they're so damn loud bro like you can't be in that away stand for Chelsea and not sing it's impossible because Mm -hmm. it's just they're just pure loudness and and that's what every away away support is like in England so being at Tottenham and winning the game Mm -hmm. and singing with them and you're in your little pocket and the whole stadium is quiet Mourinho's rattled Lampard's right in front of you he's giving it bro Williams crashing it with two goals I think it's just it was just it was one of the best, it's probably one of the best games I've ever been to because it was rivals away. So we was in their place just making a mess and it was, yeah, it was mad, bro. Okay, mad. good, good. That, that was an amazing experience. And I'm, I wasn't even there. I'm just listening to your oh. experience. You know, it gets me excited um, <laughs> to go to my first game Crazy. eventually. Um, I'm taking, a, taking a step back here, content creation. Mm. Just take us on your journey um, and how you got to that. Ah, do you know, it's a very long journey because it doesn't even start with this channel. It doesn't even start with Twitter, to be honest. It starts with um, my first ever channel, which was a channel that I made when I was 16 with my mate. Mm-hmm. Um, and we weren't even talking football or anything. It was just challenges we were doing, skits, because back in, back in what was that, 20, 2012, maybe 2011? Um, that's what YouTube was for us. Like, it was just, you know, challenges, um, try not to laugh challenge, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And... Tried that, you know, did that for a year or maybe it was nine months, got to maybe 500 subscribers. Then it just ended because I moved to Ireland. Then I started up another channel, which was similar to this podcast channel, interviewed mm-hmm. people, interviewed Lewis, mm-hmm. um, interviewed Alex Goldberg, mm-hmm. in, interviewed Miz. So um, you can have the man soon. <laughs> yeah, interviewed, interviewed a lot of people um, that I just met on Twitter when I was just starting. Mm-hmm. similar to yourself mm-hmm. um and then that was like a that was a, again non-football that was all about people telling their story um talking about real life and mm-hmm. and the journey and whatnot and there, there was some good podcasts in there and then that got to like a hundred subs or 130 or whatever it was um i don't even think it was even that many it might have even been like 70 70 something and then i then then that ended as well so then i then i realized quite quickly that Starting a channel for me just off the bat wasn't working. I needed to start a spider diagram of where am I getting these people to come and actually listen. And obviously the quality has to go up as well because the quality wasn't great. And that's where I started Twitter. So I started Twitter when I was working, started tweeting, getting into the Chelsea community, you know, meeting people slowly. All those people I've really just mentioned, loads more. Um, Started a blog. Uh, mm-hmm. which was crazy so random but now that i look back on it, it was it was great um and then i started making videos on there because i was like this is my this is my bag is making videos it's something that not a lot of people on this platform are doing they're all tweeting they're all mm-hmm. making comps or you know mm-hmm. that's their skill but my skill is making videos so i'm going to put videos out and i started putting the videos out on twitter mm-hmm. and slowly but surely you know a few thousand views then you know 10 plus thousand then 20 then 50 hundred and then it just kept going and going the more people kept watching the more people wanted to see more videos so i just kept making more videos transfer videos um skits um reviews to the games like twitter was my youtube i was just that was my focus i'm building this platform i'm building these followings i just kept going and going so then more people that watched the more people that kept you know putting the putting the retweets on it more people that kept reaching out and suddenly I've just started to build that network of loads of people from YouTube, from Twitter, um, being on a couple of YouTube shows, again, building the name out. And then opportunities just started coming, bro. Started coming. I was social media manager for a while at Cheeky Sport. Um, I was byline, you know, co- co-host for Alex. Um, I-, I did Chelsea Echo stuff. Then I had my own blog, which I ran. And then I had loads of creators under me writing, which mm-hmm. was great. Went on Talk Sport a few times. They just kept building and building. And then. Mm-hmm went on a few YouTube shows and I, and I was, I was dragging it out because I was like, I'm going to make sure that when I make this YouTube channel, I go straight away full time. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not going into this YouTube channel. No, with a part job. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, because I know 
that is tough to do with a job. It's tough to, because you're missing stuff. If there's breaking news, you're working, you're looking at the breaking news thinking, I could have gone live. Mm-hmm. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? You're looking at you're looking at the breaking news thinking, damn, I could have gone live. Or you're looking at the transfer news thinking, damn, I could have made a video. And you know, the sooner you make it, the better, et cetera. And it's like, I didn't ever want to have that issue on YouTube because YouTube is very unforgiving. It's very competitive mm-hmm. and it's very, it's very demanding. So I knew that before I even had one subscriber, before I was even monetized, I knew I needed to be full time on YouTube. And I was like, I trust that the people that are on Twitter are going to come over with me. Plus I'm on some YouTube shows. Mm-hmm. Um, so I so then at some, when, when the time was right and I knew I was moving house mm-hmm. to live on with my mate who I started with the first channel mm-hmm. um, and he could help with the editing and he could help with the camera and just, so I wasn't on my, on my ones. That's when I started the YouTube channel and it was in like October. Mm-hmm. um of 2020 2019 was it or 20 yeah i think it was 2019 um was it 2019 no three years 20 maybe 2021 i'm mm-hmm. not sure i think it was 2021 but yeah it was 2021 because it was the same season that lampard went into Tuchel and then we won the champions league mm-hmm. so if that was 2020 maybe october 2020 and then we won it in 2021 yeah, yeah so yep. um so yeah and then yeah just went full time started making the videos covid hits mm-hmm and that was like, whoa, what, what, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. You had to think fast because mm-hmm. this is the beginning of my YouTube career. I can't afford for this. I've just started monetizing, but my channel's probably making 300 pounds a month, mm-hmm. 500 pounds a month on a, on a great month. Um, so I'm, so I'm thinking now, how am I gonna, how am I gonna get to a point where I can, you know, get through this? Mm-hmm. And that's where the stream started. And then I just started saying, right, I need to make some shows. Need mm-hmm. to make some shows. Everybody's at home now. All you can eat Chelsea starts. London Club's Carnage starts. Battle North starts. Mm-hmm. Um, interviews start. I just start dipping into my network, my contacts from previous stuff that I've done, previous mm-hmm. work. And that's where I start interviewing like former players or journalists or commentators. And then yeah, just just basically just trying to get through that COVID period. And and yeah, from that moment on, we just we just never stopped, bro. And the one thing with it is that you just, I put myself under the pressure because you never know when it's going to end. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? You never know when it's going to end. And if it's, it's, it's a mad mindset to have even with any a hundred K now, but mm-hmm. it's the same way I look at it as when I looked at it when I was at 20 K or when I was at, you know, 10 K. I remember, I remember 10 K was such a big moment. I was like, mm-hmm. yo, this is mad. Never thought I'd get to 10 K. Um, but yeah, you just, you just have to treat it like, to treat it like it could all go it could all go left one day or maybe everybody will stop watching one day it, obviously that's not how it works but <laughs> yeah bro that's how i look at it because if yeah. i look at it like that then i know i'm gonna i know i'm gonna i'm gonna turn up yeah and i guess it's because of the self-motivation plus you're doing something you know, you somewhat look seem to love but i know definitely you're talking about are you interacting or creating content around the game you love and mm. around the club you love so i can definitely understand that What's it like knowing that you're one of the biggest faces um, fan-wise for Chelsea? Like, pe- when you, in the sense that when you speak, people listen. Mm. It's, it's, um, it's interesting. I try not to think about it because when I was first starting, I remember looking at who were the, the top speakers or I guess the most known speakers for Chelsea at the time, um, which was like Rory. Um, Sophie, I think as well, Lewis. Um, and I was just, I remember looking at them thinking, rah, that's a, that's a lot, a lot of responsibility. Every, every word that you, that you say, if you say it in a certain place, I think in my own platform, my, my own community understand me. They understand when I'm being sarcastic. They understand when I'm being serious. They understand when I'm making a joke because we have that relationship. But say you go on the overlap. I went on the overlap. I've only been on it once. Um, and it's one of those platforms where you know when you go on there, mm-hmm. every single word that comes out your mouth will be analysed after the fact. It's, mm-hmm. uh, it's a platform where it's going to reach hundreds of thousands of people, sometimes million plus, mm-hmm. and it's, it's going to get clipped. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, for me... I get clipped all the time. Do you know what I mean? I do DR, I do big six, I do my own stuff. So I don't, I don't, I don't really care about getting clipped, but 
when you're sitting on the overlap and you're speaking with Carragher or Neville or you know that you're representing your club, whether you like it or not, whether you want to or not, because a lot of the time you don't really want to represent the fan base because it's impossible to. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. people think representing the fan base is easy. It's not because you can't take every opinion and nor should you take every opinion in the fan base and try and put it into one opinion and then speak on that because it's impossible. The, the fan base is divided in terms of opinions. The fan base has always been divided in terms of opinions. Even when Tuchel won us the Champions League, people wanted him to be gone the, the year after making two finals and, and dealing mm -hmm. with Lukaku and making Champions League in, under sanctions. So if people are, are wanting a manager out in September after a slow start, I can't imagine to think how it was possible to, to speak on the behalf of the fan base, quote unquote. Yeah. That's, not, mm -hmm. that's something I'm just never going to try to do. I just speak my own opinion, try and be logical, try and be balanced, try and be fair. Mm -hmm. And then if people resonate with that, then fantastic. But if you try and get yourself into, if you try and put yourself in a position where you try and rep the fan base, you're just going to, you're just going to find yourself, you're going to find yourself in a mess because you, half of the time the fan base don't even know what they want. You know, mm -hmm. we, we saw polls with Poch. In yeah, that the five was... game run before the five game run, eighty percent get the hell out of my club. Mm -hmm. Then after the five game run, sixty two percent stay. Mm -hmm. So what are you trying to rep? Really? <laughs> what are you? What are you? Do you know what I mean? Now mm -hmm. there's there's a balance to defending the club because we defend the badge. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, we defend the badge. We defend the club in terms of we want to we want Chelsea to 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 be seen and you know we want to speak on Chelsea in in the best way possible in regards to we don't want to be we don't want to have media's media agenda against us. If there's something that's incorrect, we want to call it out. If there's something that um, is unfair for the, for us as a club, we, we have to call it out. But at the same time, we don't want to get into this cult mentality of we must defend everything. We must defend mm. everything. We have to. Some of it is well. true. Some of it is yeah. true. What are you going to do? It's true. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Some of it is true, and some of it does need to be critiqued, and some some of it does need mm -hmm. to be said because if it doesn't, if it doesn't get said, and it, and it is just all cult mentality, and it was it's just all defend the club. Mm -hmm. Then you're not really defending your club. Exactly, because really it's gonna get thrown back. It's if, gonna get thrown back. The yeah, the owners but, won't listen. The, these exactly, these exactly. bigger heads won't listen. And because a lot of people feel like when they're defending the club, they def they have to defend the people that are running the club. The people that are running the club are custodian custodians of the club. Mm -hmm. They're the people that are part time. They're not mm -hmm. gonna be here forever, but we are. So yeah. when it comes to defending the club, defending the club is about defending what is best for the club in your opinion in regards to the club being successful, mm -hmm. not defending anything that happens at the club, regardless of its success. Yeah. Because if you get down that lane, then like you said, the owners can really just do as they please because they won't be held accountable by their own fan base, mm -hmm. the, the, the club's fan base, um, because we're in a cult mentality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so there's a balance, there's a balance, but yeah, want... it's, it's, it's a difficult one. Yep. I wanted to ask you this question a bit later on in the podcast, but we're on the topic. What is your honest opinion of this fan base? Because from my perspective, being new to the whole um, content creation and being new to the whole immersing yourself into the fan base to kind of connect with people, mm. it's it's crazy out here. Now, especially on Twitter, it's crazy out here. I'm not even going to lie. Because it's different when you're a fan mm. and you're... How do I upset, upset this? It's different when you're a fan and you're like, oh, this is all I know. This is from my perspective. This is just Chelsea. I You would see a few fans here and there, but when you go into the Twitter space and when you go into other spaces and yeah. when you see people that live and breathe Chelsea before work, during work, it, it's crazy. And I want to say it's toxic, but then that could just be because of what happened with the new ownership. So yeah. what are your thoughts on it? Um, you know what? Yeah, this <laughs> people laugh when I say this, but I don't think our fan base is really any more different than others. I think, yes, we've experienced immense success and that comes with a certain expe expectation to, to be successful, but that's the same as any other big club from, from the moment your fan base doesn't expect or doesn't demand to win trophies. You're not a big club. Mm -hmm. Right, so for me, we're just behaving how we should. We're a big club. We've won two Champions Leagues. 
We've won two Europa Leagues. We've won Premier League titles. We've won FA Cups. We've had big moments. We've been one of the most successful teams in the last 20 years in this country. Mm-hmm. Why should we behave like we're thankful? Thankful for... Any, the scrappings. Any, <laughs> well, like, well, why should we? There's no need to. Mm-hmm. Big club. Big clubs have to act like big clubs. And it's funny. Every time people tell me, oh, Chelsea fans are spoiled or Chelsea fans are, you know, are, like... Are Arsenal fans not demanding to win? Are Man City fans not demanding to win? Is Liverpool fans not demanding to win? Well, maybe not. I don't know. But in regards to us, for me, we're just we're just trying to win. And that's what everybody should be trying to do. If you're a big club, you should be trying to win. And if you're not winning, you should be asking why. Mm-hmm. And it, are you going to win soon? Are you aiming to win soon? Okay, cool. So we should see steps and stages to that and progress. If not, what's going on? You always have to ask these questions. You always have to flag these things up. Otherwise, you just end up getting... I mean, Chelsea are about to potentially go 10 years without a title. Mm -hmm. They don't win a title in the next three years. They've gone 10 years without a title. We haven't won a title since 2017. It's now 2024. It's been seven years. It's going to be 2025 next season. You know what? You know why I made that face? Because that Mm. Champions League win really covered up a lot. Yep. Yep. Oh... If we didn't win that Champions League, mm-hmm. we would be trophyless for how many years? Since since Sari's since Sari's Europa League win. Sari's Europa League. Because Lampard, we lost the FA Cup final. And ever since then, we've lost every FA Cup final. We've we've lost every League Cup final. And we've wow. we would not if we didn't win the Champions League, we wouldn't have the Super Cup or the Club World Cup. Mm-hmm. Those are Still. the three trophies we've won. We wouldn't have any of those. If we don't win that Champions League, we wouldn't be able to go into those two competitions. So Chelsea would effectively be trophyless since... We would really be a banter club then. That's what I'm saying. We can't, we can't but restart. It's, it's fine price. margins. Do you know what I mean? It's fine margins. So in sport, because it's such fine margins, people are on the edge. And people should be on the edge. People should be on, 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 mm-hmm. on alert. Because why, 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 would you, why would you want to, you know drop off into mediocrity why would you why would you be cool with that mm-hmm. you know why would you be okay with that people's people's best memories of chelsea are either chelsea like winning games in regards to winning against their rivals mm-hmm. winning trophies having big moments with drogba at wembley having big moments with lampard captain in the team to win the champions league having big moments where bet batshuayi scores at west brom you know or lampard scores against bolton or even Di Matteo scores against Middlesbrough and wins, mm. wins the FA Cup. You know, those moments have become much fewer yeah. and far-fetched if you don't have some sort of standard. Yeah. No, even, no, the, even the team in the late 90s, early 2000s, before Roman had a standard. So for me, it's, 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 yeah, for me, it's one of those things where people will say we're, we're spoiled. People will say that, you know, well, whatever, but you put most of those those clubs in the top six in the position that we were in a couple of seasons ago when we finished. Would be the 12, same thing. Would be the same thing. Impl- they would have absolutely imploded. Mm-hmm. Some of them they would, would be imploded. worse. I mean, you, you look at Arsenal's fan base when when they were finishing eighth. Look, look at the look at the look at the chaos. Every year, look at the carnage. Out. Every year, are, are they out. spoiled now? Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like everybody tries to pretend like their fan. Even Klopp, if yeah. Klopp had finished twelfth. Do you think 50%, 40% wouldn't want him out at Liverpool fans? Exactly. Like, it, would have been, it would have been carnage. It would have been anarchy. You yeah, and I mean? so, it gets crazy over there in Merseyside. Yeah. So, so if, if, these guys, if these guys actually felt that drop-off, mm-hmm. then they would be exactly the same way. In fact, I don't think Chelsea were even that mad. I'll be mm-hmm. honest, I, I said it so many times. I think Chelsea fans were actually all right. When we finished 12th, mm-hmm. you would have thought it would have been a madness. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't. I don't think it was. Okay. Okay. I I I agree there. Um, taking a step back to you and um your journey here. What what was it like? What like put me in the mindset you were in, or the excitement you were in, or however you felt when you mm. first got called up to um, Sky Sports or BBC? Because <laughs> if it was me, I would have been like, I made great, it. Great I made question. it. Y'all can't talk to me. <laughs> For my regular friends to talk to me, y'all gotta make an appointment. Do you know who you talk uh, to? Because <laughs> growing up, I we're, from, we're from we're um, from the same era. Growing up, being on TV, it's a thing. 
It's not like no, it's not like this modern times. You know, you just everyone's on YouTube or whatever. But being on a televised channel, you know, your profession, you you you, you gain, you immediately gain ten extra words. You don't know what these words are, but you gain ten extra <laughs> words. Your professionalism goes up. You know. Yeah, I mean, so so being a YouTuber was always my dream. Mm-hmm. So that so so one thing I can I can say, which is not maybe everybody, right? Because a lot of content creators, their dream might be to be a journalist or their dream might to be a presenter or their dream might to be to commentate. I don't know. Everybody's got a different dream. Sometimes people just land into YouTube, you know, in, 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 in fortunately or because they're just trying to find their way to somewhere else. As you can tell with my free channels, my dream is to be a YouTuber. So this is the pinnacle. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? When I, when I go to these things, I call them away, away days. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. I'm just going on an away day. I'm going to I'm going to another you know I'm going to another club stadium. I'm gonna do my best to to represent the club well and and do you know be as honest as I can, whilst being respectful, and obviously hoping for the best and and trying to defend us if there's any if there's any BS. But I'm always gonna come back to the home stadium, mm-hmm. and this is where we play the majority of our games. Mm-hmm. So. The first, the first media experience was Talk Sport, really, to be honest, and that was that was a lot because I flew over from Ireland to be on Talk Sport too, um, and to be on a radio station and to, you know, just sit there and see what it was like to be on a radio station, um, and with all their mics and their setup and broadcasting and everything, that was that was a lot. Um, so that was my first experience. But TV's definitely different. TV's definitely different. Um, I think my first one was Sky. And it was the Lukaku incident. So it was a lot because mm. Lukaku had just done his interview. Mm-hmm. Lukaku had just basically said he wants to leave um, or he wants to, you know, whatever he said. Ret- return to. Um, I remember. I, 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 remember I had strong, yeah, I had strong opinions. Strong, strong opinions. Like I wasn't, I wasn't like a, hmm, well, I can see this point of view and oh, well, you know, that side as well. There was no balance in terms of. Mm. I was furious of Lukaku as a Chelsea fan mm-hmm. made no mistake I, and I, I'm, I've never let it go because I just felt like for Thomas Tuchel for everything that he done in the in the first six months to win the Champions League that group was going down in history as Champions League winners he mm-hmm. comes into that group and if anything is you proving to the group that, that you, you can, can help, join that you can help us and take us to the next level mm-hmm. not you coming in and running the show because you haven't you haven't won the Champions League with us. Yes, you've you've done what you've done in Italy, but you're you're new to the group. Settle yourself down and help the team. And yeah, I just didn't I didn't like the way that he he went about everything. It derailed our season massively because I remember we were top of the league and I think mm. we could have won the Premier League that season. Yep, yep. There's been a couple of times where we've been top of the league near Christmas and I think yep. we could have gone on to win the Premier League. Twice. I think, yeah, things have gone against us. Yeah, yep. Lampard yep. was top of the league as well yep. um, the- in his second season for a bit. I remember this vividly. Yeah. I had to be the country, but the look the look after thing gets me upset as well. I remember mm. this vividly. It was at a time where Ben Chilwell and Rich James was flying and they both got injuries. Yeah. But because we had what that missing piece, which was then told to be that out and out nine, we had Lukaku. Yeah. We were still competing, right? Because we were yeah. I, I I don't remember exactly how much points clear we were, but we were top of the league. This man came in an interview and said, Latora, don't you go anywhere. I'm coming mm. back. Yeah. Instead, you say, Latora, it's nice over here. Come over here and, and, and play with me. You know, yeah. you're telling someone to stay where you are because I'm not going to be here long. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Especially that's, after the 100 million and the massive wages. and That set everything. me off the reel. So I definitely get where you're coming from. So, so. So I went, so I, I, they invited me on Sky Sports for that, to speak on that, but that was via my laptop. Mm-hmm. So it was still like a, not a stream yard, obviously fancy stream yard for them. Um, I think it was like a Zoom or whatever, but um, I remember sitting behind my laptop and obviously I've watched this on TV when I was younger, Sky Sports, everybody knows Sky Sports. So this is, mm-hmm. to be on now is mad. Mm-hmm. But I'm trying to settle myself down because I know I know how to speak. I know how I want to articulate myself and, mm-hmm. and, and come across. If I just settle myself down and mm-hmm. treat this like YouTube, treat this like All You Can Eat Chelsea, treat this like a show, treat this like a watch along, I ain't got no problems. If I mm-hmm. let this get in my head mm-hmm. and, and, I'm, and I'm sitting in the backstage and they're playing the Sky Sports intro like, and mm-hmm. now I can see the two reporters speaking 
Mm. And they're like, we're going to be speaking to a Chelsea fan in just a moment about this topic, da da da, and they're going into it. And I'm just sitting there thinking, I need to, I need to calm down because. Oh, so you, so you weren't even just happy. You were just furious because of the. Okay. I'm, no, it's not even that. I, no, it's not furious. I'm just saying, in, in terms of not calm down, in terms of furious. I'm just saying because at that point it'd been a couple of days, but I just said I need to, I need to lock in here mm-hmm. and remember what I do every day, um, because they're putting me up on the big screen and they're mm-hmm. putting me up in the middle of the of the entire broadcast, mm-hmm. and the only thing that's left is the yellow and black breaking news mm-hmm. and the two side, you know, columns of the news. And I'm right in the middle on my own, full screen, name, mm-hmm. everything. And it's live. Mm-hmm. It's live. It's not, you know. So, and I think the only thing when you do those things, because for me, like I said, the pinnacle is YouTube. So it's great to do those things. But I have started to understand that what I do on a daily is, is, is above Mm. And I don't treat that as better than what I'm doing. Mm. What I'm doing on YouTube is the pinnacle. Mm. And those things are bonuses and Sad great dishes. to do every now and then, but they're under what I do. So now I, now I look at it like that, it's a lot easier. Um, but when I do those things, it's more for family. You know, family mm. love that. You know, mum, mm. you see your son on TV mm. or your mum's, you know, relatives, they see your son. On, it's something to brag about. It's something to, to mention. It's something to say. Everybody's proud, you know, grandparents. They, they resonate with TV. Mm-hmm. You know, the older generation resonate with TV. Um, they don't resonate with YouTube. YouTube is not special to them. It's not the mm-hmm. pinnacle to them. Mm-hmm. TV, radio, if they hear you on that, that's mm-hmm. when they feel like you've made it. When I reach 100,000 subscribers, I, to be honest, I'll never make it on YouTube because I'll always want to keep going. Like uh, if mm-hmm. I've hit 100, now I'm going to be thinking, how can I hit 200, 300, 400, 500, a million? Mm-hmm. But YouTube is my pinnacle. Mm-hmm. If I do a skit on YouTube, and I know that skip bangs and it's sick and it's been like really, it's a long, long time to make it. Mm. Um, that's, that's my pinnacle. That's me saying, right, yo, this is, this is the best of the best. Whereas obviously for them, it will be obviously the broadcasting and, and, mm. and the TV. So yeah, I mean, doing that and then doing Saturday social, which was in person, which was different because now you're sitting on the set and you've got the big, massive lights, big cameras. They're saying, you know, we're going live in five, four, and we're like, yeah, and, and you're doing all that. That's different mm. than doing it over the computer. Um, and actually on Friday, funnily enough, I'll tell you now, but on Friday I got invited. And I've got a message in back now. I'm actually doing um, something with Sky for a deadline day. Yeah. So I'm going to go into the studio in person. And I'll probably be, there be, for sitting, your brother. <laughs> I'll be sitting at, I'll be sitting at the table mm-hmm. on, on Sky Sports News and discussing for an hour mm. the transfers and what's going on at that moment from like 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. And I'm guessing there'll be a lot of stuff Chelsea-wise. So again, that will be different because I've never gone into the news studio before. Mm-hmm. But once, once you get a grip of it, and once you do it once, you, get, you, do, you do start to get used to it and you do start to understand the routine and you know, the kind of um, the cues because they have cues and we're going to add break in five minutes we're going to add break in a minute we're going to add break in 30 seconds whatever but it is very professional it is very much mm-hmm. there's a lot of people watching you because they're all producers directors set management lighting um and then there's like you know three or four of you presenting mm-hmm. talking but yes yeah, it's, it's mad bro it is mad it's i like to do it every now and then because it just opens my eyes to little things that you can maybe take and bring back home you can't take you can't staff. take a studio, bro. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't studio you can't take 30 staff. But if you if you go there with the mm-hmm. with the intention to just, you know, oh, there's a little light over there. Mm-hmm. I like that light. It's, you know, I, I, that's doing something. That's making a little a little effect on the side of my face. Yeah. Why is that side darker, that side light? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me just Why do I look HD on this side? Yeah, yeah. What, <laughs> what, what brand is that? Let me just quick do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, yeah man, like because yeah, you whatever it is, you're just trying to level up all the time. So that's what it is, bro. But it's it's a lot. It is a lot. If you haven't done it before, mm. and I remember the first time I did it, it was it was a lot. It was a lot. Boy, you couldn't get the smile off my face. Like like um from my from my point of view, like if from my point of view, talking about this sport, especially a club I love and I get to do it on a daily basis, man, it it's it's the it's a dream come true. And I can mm. make a living out of it. It's a dream come true because I I you you speaking to me going away. You speaking to me uh, privately. You you know I could talk about football all day, 
And when I get into analyzing the sport, it, it gets crazy. Sometimes it may sound like I'm upset, but I'm not upset. I'm just passionate about it. So you're you're honestly you doing those things. You're they're actually living the dream. You may not realize it now, but if you could, if your younger self could see you now, they're like, wow, almost at 100k subs. I'm on Sky Sports. I'm one of their reference points for Chelsea when it comes out to the transfer window. Yeah. Man, I'm telling you, yeah, I'm telling you, it's it, it's something to be to be grateful for. 100%. No, no, Sky Sports aside, still amazed by that. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> How going back to YouTube? What you gotta talk to me about these DR Sports and the Big Six? Yeah. How yeah. was it? How did how did it go with meeting Robbie and be integrating with that team? And then same thing with um the Big Six. So this this goes back to Twitter and having this goes back to Twitter and, and networking in a way where because I'm putting out content on Twitter and it's doing well, people are coming to me. Mm. And for the for the previous channel I had where I was interviewing people, I would ask them, you know, can I interview you for my podcast? This is what and but I already knew them a little bit as well. So I knew they would say yes, it was just a matter mm. of matching up times and, and dates. So I wasn't really reaching out to people I didn't know, um, unless it was commentators for my 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 channel that is now where you have to reach out to them because because Peter Drury's not going to reach out to you. Do you know what I mean? That's Peter Drury. <laughs> <laughs> but but because I'd done the byline and I'd co-hosted, obviously Alex had interviewed a lot of people. I had done a lot of shows on the byline. I'd been there for a few years, so he was able to give me some of his contacts when he had already interviewed them so i was able to take some of those i joined the football writers association um through joel who i did work for cheeky sport doing social media management on instagram and twitter for a few years so i was able to be part of the football writers association after being and doing the blog running the blog people didn't know i used to be a writer mm-hmm. I, I i did some writing you can see you can see it in your time. country yeah Trust me, you can I, do, see I, do, I do enjoy a fancy title and a play on word and an alliteration every now and then mm-hmm. um so so I took some contacts for, contacts from that book, which has like Gary Lineker and it has, you know, people that are also part of the association, a lot of journalists. So I, I started to put things together there, but doing those videos on, on Twitter and having them do big views, YouTubers at the time that I'd obviously was under in terms of age, these are like the OGs, I call them, you know, the, the Rants, Turkish, mm-hmm. you know, Robbie, um, you know, Troops. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these guys are OGs in terms of they were the first fans on the scene mm-hmm. to make this industry and this part of media where it is. So when they started reaching out to me to be on panels, I said, 100%. I haven't got a YouTube channel at this point. So this is, mm-hmm. this is great because now I know YouTube. That's the one thing I, I, like, I know what I needed to do because mm-hmm. I've done two channels. So I know I need to be on YouTube, but not necessarily on my own, own channel. I need to be on channels that are good sizes. Mm-hmm got good audiences and if i perform well on those on those shows and i do a great job people will want me to make a channel Mm -hmm. and when people want me to make a channel from twitter and people want me to make a channel from youtube live chats and people want me to make a channel because i've done talk sport or and i start putting it all together when i do make that channel i can be full-time knowing with zero subscribers that i'm gonna get to monetization Mm -hmm. quickly and i'm going to be able to live off this and if i can't live off this i'm gonna make sure i've saved enough money to live whilst i'm trying to get to a point where i can live do you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so rance reached out started a show with him and dg turkish reached out for Mm -hmm. big six and you know he had saeed he had big steve he had tobes he had a panel there and um i just joined those shows um and then joel and turkish then put me onto dr Mm -hmm. and told robbie about me um because at the time obviously it was probably rory it was sophie and maybe lewis um there were other youtubers there's george there's there's nini Eunice, but they don't they don't do that type of content as much Mm -hmm. so put me on there and you know i I had to i had to climb the ladder i had to show my worth i do a few watch-alongs um you know i do a few watch-alongs for chelsea games i do a few few um I, I i managed to make my way into the super fan debates mm. and I, I i know what i can bring you know i know what i can bring so i just started 
easing myself in and then at some point it just dawned upon everybody that yo this guy we need to we need to make sure that he's mm -hmm. he's he's here with us because he's not fucking about mm -hmm. yeah, reasonable <laughs> you know I mean? and, and yeah because it went from you know talking about chelsea cool opinions but also like i said on twitter i'm doing skits mm -hmm. so i'm wearing sunglasses and suits and 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 doing up intros and i'm 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 ha happy to hang it with expressions and kg and the best of enemies well, i'm happy mm. to go and host oh, that's watch sure. for the world cup i'm happy to go do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so just being able to just bring all those things together just just put me in a good position and then yeah and then now it's it's back back then i was always very clear about making decisions i think what you turn down is just as important as what you what you take in mm -hmm. terms of opportunities you shouldn't take everything you know, okay. there was opportunities for me to be on other platforms mm -hmm. that I didn't get great vibes from. Mm -hmm. And I knew it wasn't a good idea because once you put yourself on that platform, that's you're what you're synonymous associated with. That with. Platform for you're a associated while. with it. And if you, mm -hmm. if, if the association with that platform is not good mm -hmm. because of what that platform may be known for or how they conduct themselves or what they do, you don't want to be associated with them because it puts you in, it changes in your life. whole course. It changes mm -hmm. your whole your whole journey it, mm. it put you into a whole different position mm. so i've turned down a lot of stuff as well even mm. in my early early, early days because i knew what i wanted and i knew where i wanted to be and what platforms i wanted to be on and associated with and what i didn't want to be associated with i think it's very important when you're going into youtube to actually study youtube mm. i studied it i went through all of the chelsea content creators i went through all of their pros and cons it's funny because my videos on on twitter started with a series where i would at top creators in the chelsea community and I would, I would say, um, honesty is the best policy. That was the, that was the series. Cause I saw a lot of smaller accounts would bitch and moan about big accounts, but they would never say it to their face or they would never speak, speak to them directly. Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, honesty is the best policy. This is what I like about your account. This is what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And then they all started to gravitate to me because they was like, yo, I actually like this content. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's true. Um, so I actually made a lot of my, my mates in the Chelsea industry by, by actually like comment, commenting on their, on their content. So I, I went on YouTube and I went through every, I'm telling you every single, if you're a Chelsea content creator listening to this, I went on your channel and I made sure I studied it, mm -hmm. studied Son of Chels, studied Worldwide Chels, studied Nini, studied Yannick, studied George, studied, studied, um, Eunice, studied, studied every, um, L um, Lawrence, studied mm -hmm. everyone. People, people, people that think, oh, we don't really know each other. I know them. Mm -hmm. I studied them. Mm -hmm. I still study them. I still study. Joey Knight, big good friend of mine, done a Joey lot of stuff. I still study. I watch study a lot of his podcast. There's nobody, even the smaller ones, they might think, oh, he doesn't really know my... Um, Don, is it Don? Mm -hmm. I'm studying. Mm -hmm. Studying everybody, bro. Yeah, I study everybody. And when you, when you study everybody, but you look at the good stuff that they do, but you also look at what they need to improve. Mm -hmm. It makes you reflect on yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you say, right, what do I need to improve? What do I, what do I do that's good? And what do I need to improve? So it's all, it's always about, it's always about improving, but those, those opportunities just came because of my Twitter doing very well and growing at a really good rate. And then, mm. yeah, once I was in, once I was in the big six and I was in DR, I knew that was, those were two things I was going to do for a, for a long time. Cause I, cause the quality and the reach mm. matches the quality because it mm. is that good. I knew, yeah, um, th these are places that I'm going to keep and I'm going to stay with. And a few other things I'm, I'm going to gonna have to pull away from because I want to do new things. I want to try new things. Mm -hmm. Like I had weekly shows, London Clubs, Carnage, Battle mm -hmm. North, but they were never going to last forever. Mm -hmm. You know, for me, I'm here to entertain and I'm here to produce the best level of content I can and mm -hmm. elevate as much as possible and as quickly as possible. So as soon as I got to the stage of, right, the panel that I want for that show, I can't get anymore because someone's got work or someone had to leave. Cool, I've been the whole thing off because mm -hmm. there's a certain chemistry that I like here with, mm -hmm. with London Class Carnage, certain, certain dynamics that I like, that I wanted. If I can't get those, I'm not going to force it. Mm -hmm. I've just been the whole thing off. I'm yeah. not afraid to just cut the whole thing off and Start just make something new. Mm -hmm. And that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. And some personal questions from here on the diaspora, because mm. you know I'm a big fan of all this content because it's football. And, you know, football is very subjective. How on on the mornings where you're getting roasted, Lord, please don't let it be one of those other seasons because I get it myself here. <laughs> what stops you from hopping across the table? Table and just <laughs> stop it, <laughs> like because because 
let's let's call it what it is. This is a very emotional sport, and this yeah. this, this sport this sport pulls at our heartstrings. What? Mm-hmm. So we 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 perfect example. Just came off that five nil loss going into Arsenal. I guess I want to say how you felt at that time and how did you stop yourself from not getting too disrespectful or not getting too 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 overly emotional in your rebuttal, mm-hmm. but. I kind of know the answer to that because at that stage we were all defeated. At that stage we were like, you know what? It is, it is it's gone too bad. It's not like it was, it's not like Ch- it was Chelsea at their peak and Arsenal at their peak and Arsenal just whooped us. It was more of a, we're not good. We're just going to make sure you know you're not good type, type yeah. thing. But my overall question is what prevents you from not getting too emotional on, on these shows when <laughs> the club you love is in, is in turmoil? I th- I, yeah, I think I think for me the the peak emotion point is when we're playing. You know, mm. when we're playing and when we've just played, my girl knows if we've just lost. Silence for, from me, from me, silence Fox. for a good Fox. couple, good couple hours. If it's a bad defeat as well, like that six 0 was it six 0 against Arsenal, five 0 whatever it was, bro. When my my girl knows my job and she knows what the score is, she can see it on on online. She can see what the score is. She can see mm-hmm. my watch along. Mm-hmm. If we're losing five 0 to Arsenal, the rest of the evening is finished. The rest of the night is finished. <laughs> don't yeah, like don't. <laughs> don't don't ask me to go anywhere. Don't ask me to do anything. Don't ask me to to participate in any 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 banter, any any fun shit. It's finished because I need my night now to just because now I'm pissed. Mm-hmm. This is again, like I said earlier in the podcast, peak emotions. Mm-hmm. Peak. When Chelsea have been slapped to Arsenal five nil, that is peak anger for me. Mm-hmm. There's I can't think of many things that will get me angrier because one thing with me when it comes to dealing with people is I tend to be I tend to be very calm and very very like I don't get angry with people. I don't get angry with people like people do things because of what they've experienced or what their circumstances at the time, what they've got going on. And I always remember that. So I don't get angry with people. People mm. can do it, what people want at any time given. Do you know what I mean? Don't mm. don't get angry with people because people could 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 surprise you. But people could also let you down. You, it's mm. just the way it goes. So mm-hmm. I don't get angry with people unless something mad happens. Mm-hmm. Someone punch up my sister. Now, cool. It's a long day for everyone. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Now, now it's... But Problem that no. Like, that hasn't happened. Do you know what I mean? So that's the level it's going to take for me to get really angry with someone. It's got to mm-hmm. be something personal like that. But football, it's, it could be like that every week. These men have complete control over my emotions. It's, it annoys me. <laughs> they do. Facts. They do. Facts. They, 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 they have complete control. If they put in a stinker, I know it's a long day for me and I'm going to be angry. So, but for me, by the time Monday rocks around, I've had a sleep. I'm still pissed, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm, I'm always knowing that when I go there, we all don't like each other's clubs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's, that's it. That's what we're signing yeah. up for. There's nobody here to help you in your time of need, in your time of struggle. If they choose to, that's a bonus. Mm-hmm. But nobody here likes anybody. I don't like Tottenham. I don't like Arsenal. I don't like Liverpool. I don't like Man United. Sometimes these fan bases will think, oh, he hates us. Mm-hmm. I say to them kindly, I hate all of you. I hate all Equally. of you. Equally. Equally. <laughs> it's just I, sometimes I pick and choose which one I want to hate on right now, mm-hmm. but I hate all of you. Mm-hmm. You know, last season... And and Arsenal fans seem to love me because they because they know that I'm being so genuine when I say I can't have you win the league. I'm not lying. I'm not gonna say, oh, well, mm-hmm. I don't care. Every single season on record, I can't have you win the league. I don't care if it's City seven times in a row. That is what it is, unfortunately, right? Until my team get involved, City mm-hmm. are handling business and that's what it has to be. Mm-hmm. And Man United, we've got our history, Moscow, you know, mm-hmm. the, the Champions League final. You know, like, bro, I hate you guys. But then they'll be like, no, you you hate us. I, no, I also hate Liverpool. Mm-hmm. I hate Liverpool too. Cup finals. Every Luis cup Gar- final. Luis Garcia. You know, Luis Garcia, goal, the ball never crossed the line. Mm. I hate them too. And the Tottenham fans, what about us? No, don't worry. I hate you too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, so it's like, as long as, when you go onto that panel, everybody knows, everybody hates, everybody hates each other's clubs. And if it was me, Seeing Chelsea lose after spending a billion 
If it was me yeah. seeing Chelsea buy 30 players but still can't make it into the top four. If it was me, like I could cuss us just as much as they could mm -hmm. cuss, cuss us. You know what yeah. I mean? I know, said... I, know the, I know the points that they want to make. Mm -hmm. And, and sometimes Chelsea fans would be in our own bubble would be like, oh, but it's not fair. It's the context. Like, bro, we have spent a lot of money. Facts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of players. Facts. facts. We haven't made top four yet. It's facts. We've not won a trophy yet. It's facts under this ownership. These are all facts. It's not things to debate. Now, will we? We'll see. Mm -hmm. How successful we'll be, we'll mm -hmm. see. How great is the plan, we will see. But until it happens, these people are more within their, well within their right to grill us mm -hmm. until it does, mm -hmm. because exactly what we would do. And even before, if and before even if Arteta hit... and Arsenal were second, mm -hmm. they were eighth. And what did we do? We grilled them, roasted them, we roasted Ooh, the crap out of them. Good dabs, good dabs. Rightly so, rightly mm. so. Right. So you know, so it's. It, it's, it's, it swings in roundabouts and it's part of the parcel. And I always say to people, the only way to shut people up is to win. Yep. When yep. we beat Wolves, no one said they spent this. They have too many players. They did. No one had time to talk about it because Madaweke got a hat trick. Mm -hmm. Someone games, said it to me. And this is, this is why winning is key. And mm -hmm. this is why I always say, you know, for people that say, oh, it's not, it's not about winning. It's just about supporting. I said, your life as a supporter will be much easier if we win. I promise you. 100%. And if you if you love the club and you support the club, I promise you if we win, your life will be a lot easier than if we lose. Because if we win, that means we're picking up trophies. If we mm -hmm. win, that means we're going to the biggest competitions like the Champions League. Better trips for you. If we win, mm -hmm. we're getting better players, better managers. If we win, get you're, better kids. You're, you're, Don't you're forget the kids. You're watching winning football. Yep. And then, you're not getting slapped 6 0 because we're winning. Because we're good. And this is what happened to the Man City fans now. They don't know. They, they, they're, not in a pe they're not in their period where they're struggling. They're not in their period where it's a rebuild. They're just collecting trophies. They're pitching up. It's a happy day every day. For, for them, I think yeah. it's literally Wonderland. It's literally Wonderland until that, if that 150 charges come, comes up the roost. Now, just a few questions before we um, end off here. If. We were supposed to have a sit down, maybe on Sky Sports, maybe in a private box. And you had Egg Barley, Todd Bowley, and the important people from that consortium. Yeah. Firstly, what are two questions you would ask? And what would your rebuttal, not necessarily rebuttal to those questions, but what would you want to get off your chest? First thing I would, would, would address would be stockpiling. I think stockpiling young players. So what I would ask them is, why have you decided to stockpile five young strikers in the squad? Four or five right wingers in the squad. Their rebuttal would be obviously to make money. We're going to sell them for profit. And my rebuttal to that would be, Washington's not on loan. Datra Fofana's not on loan. Angelo still doesn't have a loan. Diego, who went to Strasbourg for two million, if you Diego didn't buy him, there. you could have used a Cobham player for those minutes and you would have got 10, 20 million because they're more talented than that guy. That guy that you bought on a free that you made two million profit on and you gave minutes to in the Carabao Cup, you could have used a Cobham player and you could have sold them for profit. As you can see, our Cobham players are worth a lot. Livermento, Lewis Hall, Matson, Gurhi. Etc. I can keep going. Tomori, Tammy, they all go for 20 million, 25 million plus. Why? Because they're good. So you can even make profit without spending. Do you realize that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and obviously, you know, they, they're, they're, the, they're the head hunters, they're the rich brothers. They, they know 10 times, million times, you know, more than me. But it's just, for me, it's like when you're stockpiling young players, you have to remember that they have to develop. They have to develop for you to get your money. They have to actually progress. And it's very, very easy for them to not progress. People just think that development is linear and they're just gonna they're just gonna just develop because because they because they're young. Young players don't develop if they don't have the environment to develop, if they don't have the the coaching, the attention, the team to give them minutes. They won't develop. They will just stagnate 
like any person would in any way or in any walk of life. Mm -hmm. If I if I say somebody's at school and they have the potential to be smart, but they're in a class full of children who don't listen. They have they're in a class full of children that throw paper airplanes and call mm -hmm. out the different names when the teacher's doing the register. The teacher doesn't have a spine or a backbone to control the class. There's no TA. That kid is not going to be as smart as it could have been because they didn't have the opportunity to develop and they didn't have the environment to get the best out of them. If they went to a school where maybe everybody was, was listening and everybody was on, on, their, on their P's and Q's, they may have been one of the smartest people. So, and that's just, that's just an example, but the, the assumption that someone is going to develop in the wrong environment or an environment that is not prioritizing them mm -hmm. and is prioritizing the other 10 people in front of them, mm -hmm. for me is, is a flawed, flawed strategy. Because, okay, cool. People just look at the books and as long as the books match up, that's all well and good. But for me as a supporter who is trying to obviously look at the emotional side of things, because from the moment you're not even a little bit emotional as a supporter, I think you're... You're, you're clock out. I don't know. I think if, you, if you're not emotional at all with, with your sports team and it's all business, I, I feel a bit sorry for you mm -hmm. because that's almost how they want you to be. Mm -hmm. If I was an owner who was trying to make maximum profit, I would love my fan base of my club to not be emotional and be completely 100% business. But and that's to, the difference to, to, between to a fan me, and a customer. Yeah. That's the literal exactly. difference. And to help me tally up the profit. Oh, you want to do a Twitter tweet? You want to do the profit margins of player in and out for me and showcase why I'm making my money? What, what, what are we doing here? You're, you're, you're twerking for the money that they're making. Mm -hmm. it, if I, if, it has to be reinvested here. Mm -hmm. And it has to be reinvested on players that are going to help us win. Otherwise, what am I getting? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting anything out of this. Your profit margins are not doing anything for me. If they're always going to be profit margins and they're not going to actually improve the team, or we're just going to keep buying more players to make more profit margins, and we're just going to keep doing that in a cycle, what's that doing for me? It's doing nothing for me. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, clapping for the rich man that's getting richer. What? I need trophies. It's the only, mm -hmm. thing that, it's the only currency I deal in. Mm -hmm. wins and trophies anything other than that is bonus mm -hmm. people making it through the academy bonus reese james gets his first chelsea goal bonus chalaba gets his first chelsea goal falls to the floor bonus you know these are all bonuses but the, the main currency that will shut everyone up fan base media anybody is wins and trophies nobody complains if they're winning trophies no one talks about how many cobham players are breaking through nobody talks about how much the ticket prices are really no one talks about any of these things too much if you're winning trophies if you're winning trophies i'm talking about premier leagues and champions leagues people will put up with a lot if they're winning the majors so yeah for me it was it's just you know i i feel like i feel like what what we're doing we could just do it to a lesser degree and still do it really well that way instead of overdoing it. And my other point is just, you know, youngsters are, are there every year. Mm -hmm. That's so, true. You can't marry everybody. Yeah. You can't marry everybody. Group, exactly. In every age group, there's more star boys. Mm -hmm. So you can't buy all of them every single year. Mm -hmm. Or are we going to do that? Are we going to have a, a Chelsea where there's 10, 12 incomings every single summer? That's a, a lot of... Band. It's a lot of instability. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of instability. And then well, when, when we have that, if we get that transfer ban and it's two summers, say it's two years and it's two summers and two winters, do you know how many star boys you've just missed out on in those two? Yep. So, you know, you, you've got to make sure that what, for me, whatever young player you're signing, it needs to be the creme de la creme. Yep. Esteval, creme de la creme. Kendry Pires, creme de la creme. Yep. You didn't need Washington. You yep. didn't need that trip for Fana. They need the they're, they're C B grade talents. They're not A grade. Mm -hmm. And I knew that when they signed. You can tell. Like you can you can smell it. You can mm -hmm. smell it. If someone is that that guy and they're one of the best of the best, you you know it mm -hmm. in their age group. When these fillers come in, I know they don't get no opportunity, they're not gonna play. I said I said that trip for I feel like they're over I really feel like they're overindulged in the signing of youth. Uh but moving on here. Mm. Okay, getting towards the end, let's, let's ask some of the more fun questions. <laughs> First thing, who's a player that you resonate with in the squad currently? Who, is you, who would you say is your favorite um, Chelsea player right now? <laughs> um, Cole, Cole Palmer, because I, I love the best players. I'm a simple man. Yeah. The best players are the players I love the most because they're the <laughs> ones that are, that are handling business. And because I gave him that cold name, I gave him the cold nickname, Mm -hmm. on um on dr. dr i was there uh-huh yeah it's I funny I, went on, I was on sds 
Mm-hmm. Sharky, Sharky rang me for SDS, I think, a couple of days ago. And I said to him, he said, obviously, the cold and the fire and whatnot. And I said, you know, Sharky, I actually came up with that, that, that cold name, Cold Palmer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, what? There's no way. I said, yeah, bro. Mm-hmm. You'll see in the comments un- under this video. Mm-hmm. They'll say, yo, he came up with that. Um, so because I came up with that and it's, it's done so well, um, and I said to I said to um, I said to Palmer when I was at the training ground actually I said to him yo you know I gave you your nickname I was the first person to give you your nickname and he was like what mm-hmm. and obviously he's he's one of them ones where he's always like so confused when, yeah, you know, see what? <laughs> when you see him do interviews and stuff that brother's mm-hmm. always confused, confused. It doesn't matter yeah. what it is he's just confused about everything the only thing he's not confused about is what is going on on the pitch, the pitch. exactly <laughs> you know what I mean? um, so yeah that was so yeah definitely him. Um, but the, the truth is, I, I can resonate with with nearly all of them. If they if they perform to the level I think they can perform at, or they perform above the level, I can resonate with all of them. It's very easy to resonate with players, bro. Like I don't think there's too much to it. The only players I haven't been able to resonate with that have been successful for us is like Marcus Alonso. Um, you know, players like where I'm just like, there's just so much, so much in me that just doesn't rate you to a degree like i get you're getting goals for us but i just no 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 no, no. As, as a fullback your priority for me has to be defense yeah so. there's just so many things that you know if, if i don't if, if i if i'm very clear on not rating you mm-hmm. and i'm supporting you but i don't rate you much like i don't i don't think you're good enough to play for us like ziesh i didn't I, I always i always felt like ziesh was not good enough to play for us i just from the you're moment right. he came in from you're the moment right. we went after him i said this is not gonna work mm-hmm. so if i'm like that mudrick is another one these are players mm. I just don't resonate with because I just don't I don't rate them. But mm. if I have if I rate you a, if I rate you a little bit mm. and then you perform, I re- I'll resonate with you. Do you know what okay. I mean? I'll resonate with you pretty easily. Okay, okay, okay. For me, that would be Maruweke. But yeah, <laughs> next time, next time, next time. Yeah. Okay. Currently, we're in the conference league. Um, prior to asking you the conference league question. People have been begging me to ask you this. What happened with playback? The, the oh. gremlins need to gram, bro. <laughs> bro. What happened with playback is, so we get to the end of the month and I said, I always said I was going to take a break anyway from, from content in general. I was going to dial it down. I wasn't planning on dialing it down that much, mm-hmm. but I was always going to dial it down because the thing is with playback is, playback was a new platform. Mm-hmm. We went onto it and... We spoke about, I spoke to them when I say we, I said me and Playback, the CEO of Playback. And they were trying to get new content creators. I said, okay, cool. We'll give it a go. Um, we'll see how it goes for the first few months, et cetera. But just remember, my bread and butter is YouTube. Mm-hmm. And YouTube is my main focus. Same when I went to Twitch, same when I went to all these other platforms. Like YouTube is the platform I can create videos. I can create skits. I can do editing where I can get my editor to, to edit something cool intros like there's a lot on youtube that on playback unfortunately you can't do mm-hmm. so loved it loved the calls then i went to la and to be honest my summer was just mad mm-hmm. like my i had the summer of my dreams i'll be honest mm-hmm. my summer i've never had a summer like that before in this space everything just started falling into my lap mm-hmm. i went to amsterdam with dr we did a yeah. show out there went to a show but did talk a social with dr mm-hmm. we did a live show at o2 then I went to um, the Euros final mm-hmm. with TikTok. Actually went to a whole last final with England mm-hmm. and did content there. Went to Germany. Then I went to LA. And I'm just like, bro, these, Man, these, are, life, you. these are just like back, bro. This is back to back to back to back. So at this point, my YouTube, like if I don't upload in three days, mm-hmm. I'm 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 paranoid. My YouTube is my my everything. Mm-hmm. Even my YouTube was starting to become inconsist- inconsistent. Mm-hmm. So God knows everything else was not going to even get a, a a word from me. Not mm-hmm. even a single word because people know by now YouTube is my 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 pinnacle. So if my YouTube isn't active every day, mm-hmm. there's nothing else that is going to happen mm-hmm. until that gets fixed. And with all of that, just like back to back to back to back. And on top of that, I'm moving house. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two, two, two. In the same summer, I'm moving house. I'm trying to make sure I find the right house. I'm climbing poles to put up. Internet <laughs> cable. I'm putting up internet cable lines for the fast fiber with the, with the one engineer that they sent out. It took a whole day to do that. Moving, buying furniture, moving the set, 
clearing out the old place. So much going on. Don't don't have the don't have the mental, not even mm. the not even the time in terms of physical, because I had the time, but I don't have the mental capacity to do it. I, I know. There's so That's, much, know. there's so much going on, and I know that all these things are too important. Mm-hmm. I can't fuck none of this up. Mm-hmm. I have to get the house move right. Then the house move sets the tone for a content creator in terms of your studio, your mm-hmm. internet connection, your next two years of, of progress mm-hmm. and where you're trying to go to. Starting my homegrown podcast back up again, which I which I, I did a couple of episodes with KG Turkish and I haven't mm-hmm. been able to get back to you. Your your move sets the tone. Sets the tone. Mm-hmm. Um so th- those were my priorities and and playback, I spoke with playback and they were like, right, there's a lot of features we don't have. There's a lot of things that you you can't do here. So, you know, we we it makes sense that fine, it's not a problem for you to continue doing what you're doing and and because we had a contract, obviously, we focus on mm-hmm. how many okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do how many pieces of content. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give them advice on how to build the platform, how to improve the platform because I've got experience in in being mm-hmm. on platforms, Twitch, I was a partner with them, YouTube, mm-hmm. but it just didn't didn't gr- not grow, but it didn't add enough of those features quickly enough for me to be like. Because my quality is yeah, yeah. everything. We see, we see, we see, we see. Yeah. They didn't add so enough features them, for you yeah. to make it a mainstay. Yeah, I said to them, for someone who's trying to put their quality up, mm-hmm. I need these features. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I can't do this long term. I don't mind starting it, building the community. We're having fun with the, with the call-ins and, and, and we're bringing this. But you guys have also got to bring the quality over. If you don't bring the mm-hmm. quality over, mm-hmm. it's not going to make sense for me. Because I'm now, now like mm-hmm. I said to you earlier in the podcast, I'm... I'm picking and choosing what do I because I now I'm in a great position where I've got opportunities. Mm-hmm. But what you say no to and what you say yes to is important. Mm-hmm. So the time now that I'm putting in on playback, I could be putting that time into mm-hmm. script writing. Mm-hmm. People won't see me, but I'll still be working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I, I drop know. that, when I drop that skit with that script, mm-hmm. it's gonna be better than anything because mm-hmm. people will be like, "Yo, this is mad. This is something that I can't that we haven't seen too much of." So my thing with content is always not to do what everybody else is doing. And unfortunately on a, on a platform like that right now, there isn't enough, there is enough features for me to differentiate my calling mm-hmm. from Alex Goldberg's calling or from True. Chelsea Central's calling mm-hmm. or from, you know, whoever's doing it, it's all the same. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here to make the same content as everybody else mm-hmm. as, as, as shown. Do you know what I mean? As shown, I'm not here to do Big that. Big dog, so. same unique playback you know fix up. So, fix up playback. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's not even, you know what? It's not even a fix up thing because I'm in a different stage to where I was three years ago. But mm-hmm. there's people that are where I was three years ago right now. And with those platforms, I always say they're better. And I said this to them, I said to them, these platforms are better for new creators. Mm-hmm. Creators that haven't got a platform yet. Creators that need to grow from the ground up. Creators that haven't, are just getting started and need somewhere to, to, to start their their community, they're the perfect people because they can start on a playback and they don't have to start with 4K cameras and shit because mm-hmm. no, one's, no one's expecting that from them because they're just starting. Mm-hmm. And you can build from there. But if you've already set a bar... Hey, quality can drop. Quality bar, can you're drop. Trying to set, forget the bar you've set. You're trying to go to the next bar. Mm-hmm. You, can't, you can't do that for too long because it's just it's not going to make sense. It's, it's not going to... It's not a good, it's not, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna elevate you. Cool. cool. It's not gonna elevate. So, yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. And our final question here, because this ran a lot longer than you expected. <laughs> Chelsea, well, Civic versus Chelsea tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. Mm-hmm. What, 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 what can you expect? Give me a scoreline result. Or what are you looking to see? Um, in terms of squad and, um, you know, in terms of squad and in terms of the scoreline. I need a better performance, bro. I'll be honest. The first leg, I wasn't impressed. Now, I, I don't know. By the way, you right football. Yeah, wow. it's tough because it's tough because obviously it's still early on in his tenure. So there's, you know, there's going to be, you know, peaks and troughs, and there's going to be moments where the team don't play to the level maybe we think they can. That might come in six, seven, eight months. But when you're playing teams, no disrespect, at home from the Swiss league. 
for me, there's a base level that we got to be hitting, and and I'm I'm not going to deviate from that because we've just spent too much money and we have too much quality to 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 think otherwise. When you go and score four goals away from home to Wolves in one half, that just kind of proves the point. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? In terms of the, the 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 games in the playoff of the Conference League, should be good performances mm-hmm. from start to finish. We shouldn't be getting bopped. They shouldn't be having more shots than us. Mm-hmm. We should be bopping them, controlling the game, and winning comfortably. That's all I want. Mm-hmm. In the second leg, if we could win that game three four nil, mm-hmm. and we bop them and we play to the level, mm-hmm. then that's that's all it is, bro. Literally, that's all I want. So that's I'm gonna say my prediction is four four nil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four nil. Yeah, I agree. I honestly, I don't care what the scoreline is, as long as we win and yeah. um, just a bit of performance. Because the reason why I don't care what the scoreline is, I'm expecting these fringe players are these players that haven't started the season well. Mm-hmm. I.e. Mudrick, I.e. Badi Ashil, you know, um, I.e. Tosin. These, uh, I want to see a performance from Jurgensen. You know, Mark Gui, Mark Gui, score your first goal, for, score your first Chelsea goal. I want to see these players just take the game by the scruff of the neck and just absolutely kill it. And Kuku yeah. will probably play, in my opinion. And, you know, go score some goals. Get some game time under your belt and kind of kill it. Because again, you 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 just said it, it's a playoff. It's not even like the competition actually started yet. You That's see what, what I'm saying? saying? This so, team lost to be in the position they're in to play us. They lost to Braga to be here. Right, I never not play with us last week. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank God for that Wolves win because it would be it would be it would be scary yeah, hours right now. <laughs> when you say it like that, you know when you put it into perspective, it's it's a mad and 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 how did Braga get here? Well, they must have finished like fourth or fifth in the Portuguese league last season. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they lost to that. They lost <laughs> to the fourth. They they lost to the fourth fifth best team in the Portuguese league, and we're here struggling. Struggling care. with it. I don't think, yeah, struggling with it. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. You know what yeah. I mean? I don't think so. <laughs> All right. Matisse Marnie. I won't take up much more of your time. Thank you for joining me today on the Final House Podcast. Fads, I hope you enjoyed the content. I hope you enjoyed the question. And again, just, just like, share, subscribe. I'm still getting used to that. You know, I still forget. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'll put the, the socials everywhere. You'll see Matisse's socials if you don't already know. Um, we, you'll see us on All You Can Eat Chelsea together, and I'm hoping to have some more guests on. on. It's like a mini series, one on one with Javon. Mm-hmm. Get it clear it. Um, but yeah, <laughs> thank you for joining us on the Final Podcast. Peace.